Coming up on today's show, Chinese automaker NIO announces a brand new 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, and unlike most automakers, offers existing customers an upgrade path. The Hummer EV will launch with no electronic speed limiter, says GMC engineers, and an all electric wingsuit that is absolutely bonkers gets powered by BMW batteries. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. Thanks for joining me. We are back to normal after last week's Halloween special, and I just wanted to let you know that while the episode did upset some of you, and even lost us two supporters, we did manage to raise $1,200 for the Environmental Defence Fund in the process. So thank you to all of you who donated and took it in the spirit it was intended. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help switch from fossil fuels to electric today by going to electricauto.org. We start today's news show with the news that Chinese automaker NIO has just unveiled a brand new 100 kilowatt hour battery pack for use in its range of electric vehicles. Aside from the cell-to-pack design that's new for the 100 kilowatt hour pack, which is essentially making the cells part of the pack's structure, what's really interesting about this new battery is the fact that NIO is happily offering the pack to customers as an upgrade for the pack in their existing NIO car, be it an ES6 or an ES8. Thanks to the battery swap technology that NIO operates, the swap can be done really simply and packs can either be purchased outright, leased or paid for using the battery as a service product that NIO offers customers, which includes battery swapping for long distance trips. Chinese automakers are often given a hard time, but when it comes to future proofing cars, I think NIO is doing everything right here. Ever since it first unveiled the e-tron GT as a concept car more than a year ago, Audi has been promising great things of its high-end, out-and-out halo vehicle. And this week, it continued the pre-launch teasing by publishing a series of photos and videos of Formula E driver Lucas de Grassi putting the most powerful e-tron GT, the Audi RS e-tron GT, through its paces on the racetrack. While the Audi e-tron GT, which shares the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan, is already well endowed in the performance department with 590 horsepower, 440 kilowatts, give or take, the RS variant pushes that to 637 horsepower, 475 kilowatts, meaning it does the stoplight sprint in 3.5 seconds. If it drives anything like the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, it is going to make massive waves with its likely equally big sticker price. The diminutive Candy K27 electric car, a car which got its official launch earlier this year in the United States, has been approved by the California Air Resource Board as being eligible for California's $2,000 EV purchase initiative. This means that when paired with the US federal tax income credit, the company says customers can get the K27 for under 8,000 US dollars. While the Candy K27 isn't what most people will look for in a car, it's very no frills and it manages just 59 miles, 95 kilometers, from a charge of its 17.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, Candy America is hopeful that it will attract the attention of car buyers who would ordinarily not be able to buy a brand new electric car. However, with its limited performance and diminutive size, I'm not sure this four-seater can compete against the used car market, where you can now buy a much larger, more capable used electric vehicle for as little as $5,000. What do you think? Just as Tesla is progressing at breakneck speed on its new production facilities in Berlin, Germany and Austin, Texas in the US, so too is General Motors and its battery partner LG Chem, working together as Ultium Cells LLC, progressing full steam ahead with a new battery production facility in Lordstown, Ohio. While the massive battery production facility isn't finished yet, the groundwork and superstructures are now complete, the firm announced this week that it's begun the hiring process to find 1,100 staff who will work at the facility. 
different to traditional automotive production lines, those working at Ultium will likely have to deal with clean room conditions for a large part of their day. And the training process, starting now, gives Ultium cells time to make sure that all of the staff are up to speed so that can production can begin as soon as the facility is ready. Nissan is rumoured to be readying the order books for its Aria Electric crossover, which sources suggest will begin to take pre-orders from the US from December onwards. Unveiled this year, the Aria's biggest distinction from the Nissan Leaf and ENV200 that came before it, other than the form factor change and target market – it's designed to be a much more expensive upmarket vehicle – is the inclusion of a liquid-cooled battery pack. Nissan had previously had air-cooled, both passive and active battery packs for its electric vehicles, but that decision resulted in poor battery life for both Nissan LEAF and ENV200. With an expected price tag of at least $50,000, the Aria won't be cheap. And interestingly, while Nissan's pre-orders will open soon, we don't expect it to launch outside of Japan until late 2021, or maybe even early 2022. For as nearly as long as Mini has existed, we've had the John Cooper Works variants. More powerful than the stock versions, these mildly hot variants have sat at the top of the Mini family, offering performance and style in one package. Well, now apparently there's a new John Cooper Works variant coming. But unlike every JCW Mini before it, this one will be electric. At least that's according to various sources in Europe, who have not only spied a hot hatch variant of the Mini Cooper SE electric car being tested on the public roads, but have also talked to people who say it's coming. The result, apparently, is going to be something akin to the electric Mini GP, combining the suspension tweaks of the John Cooper Work GP with the electric drivetrain of the Mini Cooper SE. We'll know nothing else other than it's been green lit and it's coming. So let's hope it delivers. As I'm sure most of you know, it was the US general election this week. And while I'm sure most of you would rather we don't touch on the still ambiguous outcome, at least as of 5.30 when I'm filming this on Friday, you might be eager to hear about the result of ballot question one in the fine Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which passed with a 75% approval. As you might remember from a few weeks ago, this measure was designed as an extension of the state's already DIY-friendly right to repair laws, and it mandates all automakers grant access to their car's telematic systems to independent mechanics and owner enthusiasts for the purposes of repair. It makes it easier for third-party companies like the Electric Garage, as owned by Rich Rebuild star Rich Benoit, to work on electric vehicles, and it should stop automakers having a monopoly on EV repairs. Tesla has received what amounts to be its largest customer order to date for the Tesla Semi Class 8 Big Rig. But rather than be from a large multinational delivery company, a billion dollar superstar, or beverage company, the order came from Pride Group Enterprises, a holding company that operates truck leasing and truck sales operations in both the United States and Canada. This is not only a big deal because of the order size – 150 trucks with an option to buy an additional 350 down the line – but because it could be the first time independent truckers will be able to consider a Tesla Semi as one of their own vehicles. While some independent truckers are claimed to have ordered their own vehicles directly from Tesla, most lease or buy from third parties, so this could be huge news for truck drivers wanting to go electric. A few weeks ago, General Motors' GMC brand unveiled the rebirth of the Hummer in the form of the Hummer EV, an out-and-out -out performance pickup with an insane amount of power and an equally insane price tag. CGI or not, the early videos of it were enough to sell out the Hummer EV Edition 1 in just a few hours. This week, we learned more about the truck, including its likely performance. While final figures haven't been detailed, most electric vehicles have an electronically limited top speed to ensure they deliver on-range promises. But apparently GM is not going to do that with the Hummer EV. It'll keep on going until the motor's natural limits kick in, in order to let the driver pick between stupidly insane performance or long range. I'm not sure if it's a smart move or a stupid move, but it's certainly different to auto industry norms.
And now it's time for short shorts. Tesla, not one to make videos promoting its products or spending much money on advertising, has published two very short videos that are part ad and part tutorial, focusing on how to charge your Tesla away from home. They're really well made. Swindon Electric, the company responsible for all electric bespoke conversions of the original classic Mini, has announced the price of its crate kit, allowing DIY enthusiasts to convert their own cars. Parts are available individually, but to buy the whole kit, you'll spend more than the cost of a new Mini Cooper SE. Toyota CEO Akido Toyoda made a really weird dig at Tesla this week, using cooking analogies to cast shade on Elon Musk. Toyoda said that Tesla was just selling a recipe for EVs, but that it had a kitchen and real chefs. My, my, how this once beautiful bromance has soured. Yamaha has introduced a mildly refreshed version of its Evino electric scooter. While some news outlets are portraying this as a new vehicle, it is essentially a refresh of an existing model. How limited is its performance? Well, it has a range of 29 kilometers, 18 miles per charge of each of its two batteries, which is just about enough for a daily commute. Elon Musk loves himself some pranks, so when he made an April Fool tweet in 2018 about being outside Fremont drinking tequila bankrupt, you might have expected that that would come back. It has, as a stupidly expensive $250 bottle of tequila. It's already sold out. Tesla fans. Volkswagen has announced that it's working with the Greek island of Astapalia to turn it 100% sustainable. This includes turning the entire island's transportation system electric and ensuring that the island is powered by renewable electricity. Prestige brand Bentley has announced its intention to make its entire vehicle lineup either electric or plug-in hybrid by 2026, transitioning to all electric by 2030. That might sound like a tall order from standstill, but I should remind you, it's owned by Volkswagen. Tesla has received official approval from the Chinese government to bring production of the Model Y electric car to market in China. This opens up the possibility of not only Chinese customers getting a Model Y, but other markets too. The BMW iX3 official media event has taken place, showcasing the production version of the iX3 on the road. It's not coming to North America, but it is going on sale in Europe, where it will be another cross-shopper against the Tesla Model Y. Green, the only well-known hacker and security white hat, has found references in Tesla's latest software that points to a future 5G modem within new cars, as well as hints that the 5G connection could be used as a sharing feature between customers using a new hotspot. Despite the COVID-19 and Brexit-caused double-dip recession that the UK is heading into, electric and plug-in hybrid vehicle sales showed no signs of slowing in October, with official figures showing that nearly one in eight new cars had a plug. Panasonic is working on a brand new battery cell at the Tesla Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada that's different to the new 4680 cells Tesla has recently unveiled. It will allow far faster charging compared to current 2170 cells. The Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, the, the wagon or sportback variant of the popular Porsche Taycan sedan, has been spotted yet again on the roads of Europe, undergoing pre-production testing. This time it was without camouflage, which suggests that it's nearly ready. Tesla has officially confirmed that customers in Canada and Norway will be the next to get the chance to test out its full self-driving beta software via over-the-air updates. Other markets are still on hold, presumably while Tesla ensures compliance with local laws. French automaker Citroën has taken Polestar to market over the similarities between the Citroën Chevron logo and the Polestar logo. I said market, I meant court. It's not clear who will win, but frankly the two designs, while they use similar concepts, are vastly different in practice. To get around the EU's tough corporate average emissions rules, Honda has signed a partnership with Tesla in order to use some of Tesla's emissions credits to offset its own terrible fuel economy and emissions. It will, of course, have to pay Tesla for the privilege, but it is less than paying massive fines. After previously developing its own electric vehicles under former CEO Andy Palmer, Aston Martin has announced this week that it's signed a partnership deal with Mercedes-Benz, 
It will supply Aston Martin with electric drivetrains for use in its cars. Tesla might be dominating sales of EVs around the world, but in October, China's number one EV wasn't the Model 3, but the Wuling Hongguan Mini EV, a diminutive budget-oriented city EV built by GM's Chinese automotive partner. Nearly 20,000 examples were sold in October alone. After an unfortunate video did the rounds last week, showing the SIT Acronis autonomous race car accelerate into a wall during a robo-race pre-season event, the engineers behind the car explained exactly what happened. The steering wheel was locked, the car tried to stand left, but it couldn't. Whoops! And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Earlier this year, I was among a group of lucky journalists who were given a chance to drive the Volvo VNR electric box truck and Class 8 big rigs as part of a media event celebrating the end of Volvo's Pilot Lights electric truck test program in SoCal. This week, we learned that Volvo is ready to launch the production version of its VNR electric truck early next year. It will make the vehicles in Virginia, USA. The order books will open next month, and says Volvo, it's all part of a plan to turn its entire truck operations electric. Meanwhile, in Europe, where Volvo has been selling electric trucks for a while, the company announced that it's going to be launching a trio of new, longer-range electric trucks designed exclusively for the European market. With no gears to worry about, there are two gears, but it's an automatic switch between them, these Volvo electric big rigs and trucks are far easier to drive and could potentially save truckers literally thousands in fuel costs. And finally... We've seen plenty of weird and wonderful electric transportation on this channel over the years, from electric human hybrid watercraft through to electric boats, planes, hoverboards, and more. But an all-electric wingsuit, sometimes called a flying squirrel suit, well, that's a new one on us, but it is real and it just took its first flight. Enter Austrian professional base jumper, skydiver and daredevil Peter Saltzman and his all-electric wingsuit. Featuring a pair of 7.5 kilowatt motors powered by a battery pack made of BMW i battery cells, the suit can fly for around 5 minutes at full pelt, that's 60 miles an hour, more at lower power levels, after launch from a helicopter or plane before the suit wearer pulls the parachute and gracefully descends to Earth. It is utterly bonkers and I love it. Not sure if I'd be allowed to have a go though. Probably kill myself trying. Best not. And on that note, we're done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, or find someone to talk about making your own switch to electric with by going to electricauto.org. We'd love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And if you feel able, please do consider supporting us using the links below, as well as finding chats to our Discord chat room and our brand new, ready for the holidays, swag store. I will be back next week, but in the meantime, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And yes, that does mean wearing a mask and keeping your hands clean. Keep evolving!